Hi, I'm Linda Stone. I'm the owner of City Flowers in New Buffalo, Michigan. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a wrist corsage and a matching boutonniere. So you could use these for a dance, a prom, um, and a Mother's Day, any kind of an event like that that you would wanna to, want to have a wrist corsage. So thank you to those of you who've watched my videos before and came back. And if you're new, um, I hope, I'm glad you joined us. I hope you'll return. Okay, I'm gonna get started. I've got everything out here that I need. Um, I am going to show you how to do one on a little rhinestone elastic band. There's also just the cheaper elastic type band here. You could use either one. We're gonna do the dressed up one a little bit today. So these come with this little ribbon rose here in the center when you buy them just to look pretty. I just, this is taped, scotch taped on there. I like to add my own ribbon rather than this so I am going to just tie this off. It does look like it's tied, but I'm gonna tie it again just to make sure that it is secure because if it were to come loose of this little plastic plate would come loose from the wristband and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna cut this. I have some ribbon scissors that I have marked ribbon only on here because I don't use them to cut flowers with or anything else. I just wanna cut ribbon with those so they stay sharp. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do with this is to add our own ribbon and make our own bow. So I don't need the tails super long on this. This is a narrower ribbon than what I would use for like a vase arrangement. So I'm just going to make my loops pinch. And I'm gonna go for about three or four on each side. And I wanna make these slightly longer than the one before. I've got just a little iridescent wired ribbon here. Wired is easier to work with than floppy ribbon. Um, it holds its shape better and you can make it do what you want to. So I'm just twisting. You're gonna just grab between your fingers. And I'm gonna go ahead and do four on each side here. So I've got two smaller ones in the front and then two that are a little bit longer behind each one of those. And now, since I want this to have a few extra tails hanging down, this is a little trick to do that. I'm going to make a longer loop this way and then twist my ribbon and make another longer one on the other side. Once I get this all wired together, I got it caught twisted here, these I am going to cut as extra tails. So I'm gonna cut this off, and I have some wire here, some floral wire, and I am going to just go right around the center of that with my wire, push it all up together, and twist, make a nice tight twist with my wire. And then you want a little pair of wider cutters so you don't blow your scissors too much to snip that off. Now these long ones that I did, I'm going to cut these and these can become extra tails to hang down on the wrist corsage, which we can trim all this up um, to size once we get all the flowers and everything on it. So now that we've got our ribbon made, I'm gonna use this Oasis Floral Adhesive here. This holds stuff that um, is wet. You can glue flowers that have been in the cooler. You have to be careful though, this, if you get this on your fingers, is kind of like not quite as bad as super glue, but it does make your fingers stick together. So be careful with that. And I'm going to just glue this bow right on here. Just press it right in the middle of that little disc. And just give that, push it on there, and then we'll give that a second to dry. It doesn't take too long for that to get tacky and hold on there. In the meantime, I'm going to put the cap back on the glue because this dries out really fast. I'll we'll move this out of the way. Okay. So the boutonniere I'm going to make to match the wrist corsage. And I'm going to just cut these little roses right below the little calyx. If you can see where this is the little calyx part right here. And I'm going to use three of these for this boutonniere. 
I'm cutting those. I'm going to look at them and take off any bruised petals, anything that doesn't look like I want it to be on there. And then I'm going to take this wire. This is an 18 gauge wire and I'm going to push this wire right through the little calyx of the flower. Sometimes you have to just kind of play with it a little bit to get it to go through where you want it. And then I'm going to, we call this hair pinning it. It's a technique for just bending the wire down. So we have that through our flower. And we're going to snip that off. So you've got about two to three inches anywhere in that length is good of that double wire. So I'm going to do that with each one of my roses. Okay, so I'm going to wire my third one here. Same way I did the other two, and hairpin this wire. Just snip that off. Now we're going to use um, corsage tape. This is um, also a, a Oasis product, which you can get at hobby stores, craft stores, and you're starting at the top, and this tape sticks to itself as you stretch it. So you want to twist in your hand and stretch the tape as you go down the wire. This seems a little bit awkward at first until you get used to doing it. And then you can just tear this wire. It's just like almost like crepe paper. So you want to kind of push your little sepals out of the way and just get your fingers in there to start wrapping this tape right at the top. Pull it tight up there and then just twist as you go down, wrapping with the tape, down to the end of the wires. Do this on each one. This one I actually could cut this wire shorter. This was the end of the piece and I didn't snip it off. We don't need it that long, so. Okay, so we've got that done. Now we're going to tape them together. And we're gonna look at where the front of the flower is. This is obviously the back side of this flower. This is the face. So that's the side we want. And the nice thing about having them on a wire is that you can bend them. You can make them face forward now. You can make them face any way you want. So we're gonna bend that one like that. And then maybe put this little guy up here. We don't want them all the same height. It adds visual interest. So when you get the placement how you want it, kind of pinch them together, and then we're gonna go back with our tape again and just lightly tape this. We don't have to tape all the way down just yet. Just gonna tape it to hold it together. Now I'm going to add, this is a green, that I, or a foliage, and that's really green. This is called Dusty Miller. And I'm going to just tape some pieces of this in. I like the silvery look of this, sometimes as opposed to a green. And I'm gonna just arrange these in my hand how I want them. Don't want everything going the same direction. You kinda want some things to come down, some to go up. So usually with three roses, I will use three pieces of this. You could use five if you wanted a little bit more of it. We could put a couple more back here. And if this gets difficult for you to hold it, you can always stop and tape it at any point that you want to in between. Sometimes it's a little much to hold it all in your hand and see the way you want it to be before you tape it. Okay, so I've got five on here this time. And now again, I'm gonna go with my, my tape. Just twisting it around all of the ends of these stems. And they will move on you when you're doing this, so you just have to reposition your, your greens a little bit after you're done taping. It up so I'm going to just push it down a little bit. Here's my other 
geez, I wonder what happened to my fifth one. Okay, and now I have a little filler. We're gonna put just a little bit of filler in here. This one is called um, wax flower, and this is not very open wax flower. Usually the, the flowers on it are a little bit more open, but this came in tight, so I'm just gonna use it in the bud form that it is. And I'm snipping off and then stripping the little foliage that would be underneath there. Now I'm gonna poke the wax flower in between here. And I'm not using a lot of this. This is just a little filler, little accent. But get it in where you want it to go, facing the way that you want it to be. I use like three of the wax flowers like that. Boutonnieres generally are not really big. Um, corsages sometimes are a little bigger than boutonnieres, so we don't want to get this too overly full. And again, now I'm just going to tape one more time to secure in those stems of the wax flower. This time I'm gonna tape all the way down because this is gonna be my finished product. Boutonnieres typically do not have ribbons or bows. Whoops, lost the petal there. If you wanted to do just a loop of ribbon to tie in the ribbon to a corsage, I would just make a loop like that. I don't think this one needs the ribbon. I think it's plenty full for what it is. Um, and you can adjust your, your greens and your foliage how you want it to be. And there we have our, our boutonniere. Now you would put pins in that and there are boutonniere boxes that you can buy to store them in. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to, this is secure on here now. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my roses again, cutting them off with the calyx. And usually I'll use four in a bud or sometimes five, depending on the size of the roses and the placement that I want with these. This time for the wrist corsage, we're gonna glue it all. This is much easier than the old days of making them with wire and taping everything in to the corsage band. Um, again, we're gonna go through and pick off any petals that have our blemishes or dark spots or bruises on them before we start to glue them in. They just get bruised sometimes in shipping and you know, you can just pull those outer ones off. Okay, so now we wanna look at our flowers, find which one you think you like for the center. I like this one. So I'm gonna just use a very small amount of glue on the calyx of this and push it in here. And then I'm going to do that, repeat that with these other ones. Although not all of these are going to face straight up. These are going to come out to the side and face sideways so that when you're looking at this on your arm, you're seeing the flowers from all the different angles, the faces of the flowers, I should say. The glue on each one. You don't need much of this glue. It does have a very good hold. And if you get too much on, you can ruin your ribbon and stuff if you get glue spots on it. So you do have to be careful of that. And just depending on how big you want this to be. Sometimes for prom, the girls like them really big. So we won't make this one huge, but... one right there and then we got our little bud and we're gonna put that in there too just for a little bit of texture okay now once the flowers are in there now I'm gonna tuck in some of this same dusty miller this little foliage and I just need small tiny pieces for this because I don't need them to stick out very far so I'm just going to glue those in and you can just lift these roses up and kind of tuck them in underneath. This is a pretty, it has a greeny, silvery look to it, and I like the contrast 
with the, the red roses of that. It's also very soft, almost like velvet when you touch it. You don't want to ever use anything in a wrist corsage that's going to um, be pokey or sharp, that's going to rub against your skin and irritate somebody. You have to be careful of what you select when you select foliages and fillers for corsages. The most annoying thing would be to wear something that has pine needles or something on it that's poking you all evening while you're trying to have a good time. <laughs> Okay, and I'm probably going to put one more on this side right here. Got something stuck to that one. I don't really. So just look at it visually, see if it's how you like it. If you want to add any more, we could add a tiny piece right up here in the center just to bring that color into the middle a little bit. Right there by our bud. Okay, and now the last thing I'm going to do with this is put the wax flower in it. And again, these can be very short little pieces because we don't want to overdo it on filler. We just want to get some of that little contrast and texture in there is what we're going for. This one is too big. I can just separate that out. Just do lightly glue, don't over glue, and tuck these in where you want them. Roses always make a good wrist corsage. Um, you want smaller flowers. You don't want to use like great big roses. These are called the spray roses or sweethearts. Some people call them sweethearts, the little ones. Um, mini carnations make a good wrist corsage. You could also use um, like asters or in the fall, some of the mums work well for corsage work. Um, you know, never lilies or anything big with large petals that's going to fall apart. Um, it might be somebody's favorite flower, but it's probably not one that they're going to really want to wear on their wrist. So you have to choose your, your flowers according to what you are using them for, not just because it's somebody's favorite. Okay, so now I've got this, the bows there, the ribbon to soften the edges, and I can go back and trim off the length of some of these tails if I don't run this long. If you like how they are, then you don't even need to do that. I just want to cut these slightly shorter. And then we have two on this side. And with the wire ribbon, if you don't like the way they're going, like this one is kind of bent up, just flip it, turn it over so that it flows downward towards your wrist. And put this on and you can see that this glue does dry pretty fast stuff isn't falling out of it um, it's you know it's loose it's floppy it's gonna move with you as you move but it will stay together if you use this this oasis glue so okay so that's our lesson in our wrist corsage and our boutonniere I hope you enjoyed that learned something from it and you'll be able to make your own for your next event hope to see you next time